So in today's blog, we're talking about one of my favorite things. Yep, talking about sleep. Look at you and your dirty mind. That's not what I was thinking. The 2017 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine was awarded to researchers for the discovery of molecular mechanisms that control our circadian rhythm, or our biological or sleep clock. This sleep-wake cycle helps us move between sleepiness and alertness at regular intervals and regulates important functions such as, in no particular order, behavior, sleep, mood, immunity, brain function, hormone levels, and metabolism. Although we've long known the circadian rhythm exists, the Nobel awardees isolated the gene that controls it and identified the proteins that govern its cyclical function. So humans are similar to other animals in that our internal clocks are set to the rising sun and the setting of the sun. A healthy sleep-wake cycle is critical for many aspects of our health. Circadian rhythm imbalances increase the risk for heart disease, obesity, mood disturbances such as depression and anxiety, diabetes, cancer, dementia, and Alzheimer's, as well as other neurodegenerative diseases. Despite the circadian rhythm's intuitive design and just brilliance of it all, our modern lives tend to sabotage its critical balance. Some disruptive factors can be avoided while others can't. But for most of those things, we have the tools and knowledge to minimize the negative effects. We just need to do it. One big roadblock for a lot of people is daylight savings time. These changes throw a kink in our daily rhythm. The time change is minimal, but studies show the rates of driving fatalities, workplace injuries, suicides, and heart attacks rise after the spring forward change. Night owls take the longest to recover. It also has a big effect on those that work night shifts. So prepare for daylight savings time by shifting your bedtime and waking time a little bit every day of the week before. So that way it's not as big of a shock to your body. Here's a little tip for those world travelers or business people that travel all the time. So we're talking about traveling across time zones. Everyone laments how jet lag can wipe you out and it really does. Jet lag occurs when the time of day doesn't line up with your body's clocks. Crossing two time zones should take about a day of a readjustment. However, crossing six time zones can easily take three days or more to recover. So if you're going on vacation somewhere far, just about the time you're recovering from jet lag of getting there, it's time to go home, just to repeat the process all over again. Not a very good vacation. My recommendation is that the farther you're traveling and the more time zones you're crossing, the longer you should stay. Oh, bummer. This gives your body more time to recover. Plus, you get the added benefit of a longer vacation under the guise of being better for your health. It's a win-win. You can also try taking some melatonin to help trigger your sleep cycle and stay asleep longer. There are also other sleep aids that can be helpful, such as valerian root, chamomile, hops, and some others. I've included some links at the bottom that you can check out, as well as a page that you can check out where I get most of my supplements or recommend my patients get the supplements. So be aware that chronic time zone jumping can lead to a suppressed immune system, chronic fatigue, and memory issues, just to name a few. Here are some other tips that you can do when traveling to lessen the effects of jet lag. Plan ahead by moving your body's time clock toward the destination time zone during the week before, similar to the daylight savings thing. Hydrate before and during the trip. Choose a flight that gets to your destination in the early evening and stay up only until about 10 p.m. of the local time of wherever you're going. If you arrive early and are exhausted, take a two-hour nap, but no longer. Once you're at your destination, expose yourself to the sun's rays to help your body sync up with the new time zone. This one is really actually very simple and one of the most effective things that you can do. Your sleep cycle is triggered by the rising and the setting of the sun, so get exposure to the sun. 20% of the population is estimated to sleep too little, less than six hours a night. This can lead to changes in genes that regulate stress, our immune system, sleep-wake cycles, inflammation, and aging, or anti-aging. Chronic sleep deprivation is linked to heart disease, diabetes, obesity, stress, inflammation, dementia, and depression. Seven to eight hours is really the best amount, and some people may even need more. Let's talk about these dirty little things in your pocket. Electronics. The CDC says insufficient sleep is a public health epidemic, and research has established that the constant exposure to blue light from electronic devices 
is a major culprit. Changes in the level of the hormone melatonin in your, in your body are what make you fall asleep. During a normal day, morning light stimulates the body to decrease melatonin levels, promoting wakefulness. Then as the day darkens, sunset, melatonin increases to encourage sleep. However, adults and children disrupt the cycle by using smartphones and tablets late into the night. This can cause chronic insomnia because of the blue light these devices emit is perceived by our brains as daytime light, which suppresses melatonin and keeps us awake. This is made even worse by the people that are waking up in the middle of the night, they feel like they can't go to sleep, and then they get on their phone and they start surfing. More blue light, less melatonin, less sleep, and sleep and depression have a very tight correlation there. Serotonin converts into melatonin, and if you're not sleeping well, it's kind of hard not to be depressed. So here are some tips to reducing the melatonin disrupting effects of blue light. Minimize blue screen time. Read a book instead. Turn off all your screens, your phone included, two hours before you go to bed. If you can't do that, get a pair of orange safety glasses or blue blocker ones and turn your phone into airplane mode before you go to bed. That Wi-Fi is damaging. Also, change the settings on your phone to what's called night shift or day shift, depending on your phone. This will make the phone automatically shift the light type based on the time of day. So it goes from a kind of a like an orangey type color more to normal, and then as the sun sets, it kind of turns back into that orangey, decreasing your light exposure, your blue light exposure. Proper patterns of light exposure during the day are a major factor affecting how we sleep. So start each day with as much bright light as possible. Eat breakfast with as many lights on as possible to stimulate serotonin production, which helps melatonin production later in the day. Serotonin converts to melatonin, and you can also add some sunlight. Get light during the day at home and work. Open the shades, turn on the lights, try it full light spectrum or full spectrum lights. Sit by a window and look out often. Take a walk outside during your breaks, go for a jog, whatever, sit outside. Get outside, get some sunlight. You're also going to want to minimize light in the evening by dimming or turning off unnecessary lights. Put orange bulbs and lamps you use at night, especially the ones next to your bed or for reading. This helps to jumpstart melatonin production in preparation for sleep and not get stimulated by the blue light. So patterns of light during the day aren't the only way light affects our circadian rhythm. Exposure to actual sunlight is key for healthy function of the body and the brain. Research shows the average person spends less than an hour a day outside compared to our ancestors, which literally spent all day outside. Shift workers spend even less time outdoors. Lack of exposure to sunlight inhibits production of melatonin, affecting your sleep, and potentially affecting our ability to produce vitamin D. Key for bone health, mood regulation, and immune function. Common reason why most patients are going to be put on vitamin D. Not enough sun exposure. So if you can't go outside every day, use a good quality light box early in the day or put it in your office and leave it on during, while you're at work. And then when it's time to leave at four or five, that's about the time when the sun's starting to go down most of the time. Go sunglasses free for even just 10 or 15 minutes to provide beneficial sunlight exposure to your eyes and your brain. Your body's innate sleep cycle is largely regulated by the amount and pattern of light and dark you're exposed to each day. By managing the lifestyle factors that disrupt your circadian rhythm, you'll support your body's ability to function well and stay healthy. For help with sleep issues, contact my office. So I've included a bunch of links at the bottom of this post for some products that can help improve the quality and quantity of your sleep. And for those that like to save a little bit more money, check out my link that will take you to a page on my, uh, on my website where you can often save about 10 to 15% over uh, Amazon prices, which is pretty cool. So get outside and enjoy some sun. I'm Dr. Greg Mortensen. Be healthy, be happy.